TGO Tom Grunewald Outdoors is brought to you by HT Premium Ice Tackle since 1974. Polar Fire Gear. This is how it's done. Tourism Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, Canada's best freshwater fishing. Vexilar. Ice fishing begins when you turn your Vexilar on. Kalispell, Montana. Discovery in every direction. And these other fine sponsors. Hello everyone and welcome to Tom Grunewald Outdoors. I'm Tom Grunewald. Today we've got a very special episode lined up for you. We are going to take you back across four seasons of TGO where it's been all ice fishing all the time. We've been to numerous states, provinces and beyond fishing over 40 different species of fish. So we're going to take you back and we're going to visit some of those places and some of those special moments. We'll be fishing Pike in South Dakota chain pickerel in Vermont, whitefish and trout up on Lake Superior in the beautiful Great Lakes. We're going to fish walleyes in the province of Saskatchewan. We'll even fish the Mississippi River Channel itself below a lock and dam for walleyes and sauger. We've caught over 40 species of fish here on TGO in our original four seasons. And you're gonna share and get a chance to see some of those things here on today's episode. We're really excited to bring some of this back for you. So join us today as we celebrate our 50th episode by going back and revisiting some of these special moments here on TGO. TGO, where it's all ice fishing all the time. Could probably go ahead. I would say so. Say go take him, huh? Take him and I'll. We're in the body. You the got a good up. angle there. Got him. I'll try to keep the line picked up for you. Coming through a lot of weeds. These I don't know. Are all now, the weeds? Yeah, I don't know. We might have lost them out of that. There was a lot of heavy vegetation on there. See, you give up on him yet? No, I didn't give up because I think he might still be. He might still be in there. Yeah. Forward and lo and behold, you got a fish. Yeah, no, I felt, might have felt the head shake there yet. Something oh, yeah. shaking. That yeah. ain't oh, weed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, see I was pulling. What I'm doing is just letting him run off the spool by picking up all that line. We didn't have it catching and dragging on the ice and potentially losing that fish. Loose. No, so it could be a little bit, uh, could be a little bit bigger fish. Then again, we might have one of those where we have to kind of dig through all the vegetation to find and see what we've got in there, right? Didn't like it when I brought his head up to the hole. Look at that. Oh, he did. <laughs> Pulled it right out of my hand. Come on, fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a bobber. I still haven't seen it. I have no I idea. I was going to say, you can at least let us look at him. He did not, and I'm using my thumb as a drag here as well. Twice there. He just kind of grabbed at that, then he pulled that line right out of my hand. I can't get his head to the hole, so I'm wondering how big this fish is. Again, if there's a lot of weeds on him, it, sometimes it's hard to tell. If you need help once you get his head lined up, just let me know. Oh, yeah, I'll holler. You've seen me dive before. Again, I'm, I don't want to get that bobber caught when he makes one of those runs. I don't want my hand below the bobber. Big pike. Oh, yeah, that's a monster pike. Now we got to get the head turned. That's going to be the hard part here, Dennis. I got to get his head. Oh, boy, is that a to. big pike? Oh, here we go. There it is. I got it. Got him. <laughs> Do they know grow if it's big? Textbook. Do they? It's, <laughs> it's efficient. You have a water-resistant sleeve. Nice grab. Yeah, you know, I just couldn't tell. That fish came swimming toward me so hard, and then it got down in the weeds, and you could feel it pulling the. Uh, look at the, the weeds. look at the bulge belly. in the belly, and I'll just guarantee you, that's baby crappies and bluegills in there. That's just, just packed. Just, just, a, packed. just a pig. Again, the green weeds, and that fish. Oh, that's a nice one. Very you know nice what we'll fish. do here? I'm gonna just go ahead and sacrifice that leader so we can visit about it. There we go. That's a nice pike. Look at you the bet. size of the just, girth and the just oh, healthy, healthy. Beautiful pike. Man, I like fishing some tip-ups in South Dakota. You bet. <laughs> you know, and, and it, it's anything goes type of game here too. You know, we've had a couple species of bass. Yeah. Uh, you know, some walleyes will start later. You know, obviously the pike are going to help us out and play with us a bit. Nice and easy. Oh! 
<laughs> we'll be right back with some more great TGO memories right after this. Welcome back. We're celebrating 50 episodes of TGO. This is crazy with all these tip-ups you well, get here. Vermont, brother. <laughs> I'm loving this. <laughs> this is so much fun. Here in Vermont, on Lake Champlain, we're allowed 15 lines per angler. So this is just crazy with Jamie and I out here. We can put out 30 tip-ups. See there? There. Ooh, there we go. Got him going. Great. It's not a panfish, something bigger. Deal, good deal. A little bit of head shake there. Oh, it's going. Hopefully it's a pickerel. Making the characteristic pike or pickerel take run, so we'll have to see which one we got. Doesn't feel like a monster, but. Pickle. Oh, excellent, excellent. There we go. Got the right species. Look at that. Look at that. Let's see, you know, we do get some uh, chain pickerel back home in Wisconsin, but typically they're small like this and they're really rare. And I don't know if that's just because of the competition they have with the number of pike we have up there or, or what, but uh, you, you actually catch chain pickerel with some pretty common, it's a common occurrence basically here in Vermont, right? Good, good catch. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, this one's a little bit uh, feisty. You know, a lot of the folks around here consider them jig thieves. Yeah. Uh, fishing for panfish and stuff. So um, they're not ranked up there very high on the list of uh, friendly fish to catch. Yeah. But uh, because they steal a lot of uh, jigs, but I guess that's uh, that's part of the game. But they're a beautiful fish. And yeah, you kind of show the difference between pike here, and, and you can see the markings are real long here, the, the chain-like, especially on the side. You can see why they call them chain pickerel. It's still a member of the pike family, and pretty much fish the same way as you would uh, pike. And you know, you can get them bigger than this too out here. You know, a good one out here is probably four or five pounds. Okay. Uh, common is a little bigger than this, probably one size bigger than this, you know, and they're 20, 23 inch. Um, but you can get them bigger. And uh, when you get them bigger, I tell you, you got yourself a fight on the end, so. Nice. Let that one grow. Now, I know Jamie says the people in Vermont aren't uh, crazy about catching these pickerel, but the reason I wanted to come out here and do this is to show you actually some of the species that are caught here in New England. You know, this is beautiful country. There's a lot of fish. I mean, we've got, you can catch perch, you can catch crappie, you can catch bluegill, it's multi-species. But I wanted to come out here and do something a little different and really show what it's like to fish here in Vermont. And I think chain pickerel are one of those species that are indigenous to this area that people are familiar with and it shows the world you know, what they can catch here in these beautiful mountains in Vermont. Join us now as we fish for trophy walleyes on Saskatchewan's Tobin Lake. Take your time, you got right to the, the leader. Keep, keep your rod in the center of the hole. Yep. Easy, just relax, you got it, you got it. Oh, easy. Just kind of lift and, and when you see the head is under the hole. Yeah, you gotta just get the head turned. That's a nice eye, nice eye. Easy. It was just about there, buddy. Just don't force it, let her go a little. There you go, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, there you go! Oh my god! Yes! Oh. And uh, look what's coming out of its mouth. The guy with the five of diamonds tattooed on his leg. There you go. That there you go. Holy <laughs> well, should we get a oh. quick measurement? Quick measurement, you bet. 31 and a quarter. Broke the 31 mark. I heard you yelling like five minutes ago already. It's a big oh mark, it's a giant God. mark. You just kept working them and kept working them. Nice job. Tom is all over it. <laughs> That's incredible. Here, guys. Fantastic. That's See what you got. Sorry, Tom. No, you're fine. Yep. Got it? Yep. 9, 12. 11. Nine. 11, nine. 11, nine. 11, nine. 11, nine. Yep. Terry just got one. 
31 inches, just shy of 12 pounds. 11 pounds, nine ounces. Tobin Lake, Saskatchewan. If you want to try for a trophy and a personal best, oh, yeah. like Terry, oh, yeah. this might be the place you want to try. Right here, fantastic. Wow. Well, how did that trip turn out to be everything that we expected it to be? We figured we could come out here and working as a team could get on some really nice Tobin Lake walleyes. And we are holding out hope for really catching some trophies. The girth on these fish, they're so well conditioned from feeding so well, they're so fat. Boy, even when you catch a 24 or 25 inch walleye, you know you've really hooked into something. That's Tobin Lake walleye fishing, classic. We'll be right back with some more great TGO memories right after this. Welcome back. We're celebrating 50 episodes of TGO. There he is. All right, Tom. Yeah, feels pretty good. Yeah, that's a good fish, Tom. Yeah, just a couple of little bumps there. They weren't quite as aggressive. Yeah. This one came in a little harder. Good deal. Maybe it's a laker, you never know. It hasn't made out of that, uh, that, that giant yet. dive head yeah. shake thing like a lake trout yet, but there right, we go. The whitey. <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad. Boy, Good that's fun. fish. I love white fish, actually. Let me point out just how big these lures are that Aaron has us using. This is a, a, a large uh, Williams spoon. It's a Canadian spoon. It's got a great finish on it. This combination of gold and silver. Some people are saying they're getting me on silver. Some are saying gold. So Aaron mixed it up, gave me this spoon, but this is uh, kind of unusual, isn't it? Use a spoon that size for these whitefish, or yep. is that normal for you? Around here, it's it's getting to be a more common thing. Years ago, guys were sizing down like they would in typical areas. Yeah. And then some of the guys started getting them on these bigger spoons, just playing around, and it's it's been a good uh, a good lure since. Well, the nice thing about that is too is you get a better chance than if one of those big lake trout yes. flakes come through or brown trout. Yep. So it's a lot more versatile. There, I got him. No, you hooked up. Need help? I don't know, maybe. It's a nice fish. All right, I'm coming. Feels pretty good. Actually, it's it feels a little better than average. That it's just got a lot of heart. We don't know yet. <laughs> Won't tell until we see the white of the eyes. This is so much fun when you're when you're fishing in deeper water like this and you really get the chance to fight the fish. Oh, yeah. And you're down in... Uh, five, 10, 15 feet of water where you fish so often in ice fishing, you just don't get the same experience as no. this being able to pull it. There's your leader. There's your leader. And oh, yeah. another, another, one whitey, another nice white fish. Yeah. Beautiful fish. You got that, that's uh, two or three of those nice, thick, fat bodied white yeah, fish. Yeah, I can't even get my hand around this one. <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad at all. A lot of fun to catch. Oh, they're a, a hoot, ain't they, Tom? They really are. Yeah. Yeah, we ain't getting as many lake trout mix in today as we have in the past few days, but they'll come through. Yeah, you betcha. Yeah. You betcha. Yeah, when you got fish like this around and the smaller ones and so forth, them big lakers ain't usually far behind them. Can you believe we're ice fishing below a dam on the Mississippi River Channel? Well, we are. Watch this as we fish for walleye, sauger, and perch on the Mississippi River Channel through the ice. You know, a lot of people are familiar with the Mississippi River and the Mississippi River backwater areas. Lots of panfish, we got pike, we got bass, but I'm along here with Pool 9 Guide Services' Ted Peck. Ted's been fishing this water a long time, and we've had a super cold winter. It's been brutal. And while this cold weather has allowed us to do something unique, and normally, what, maybe you get a week or two, you might be able to get out into an area like this one? A week or 10 days, maybe two weeks. Yeah. We've been out here already for a month below the dam. It's unbelievable. If you look right here behind us, this is actually the pool nine that we're standing on, but mm -hmm. this is Lock. Lock and Dam 8. Lock and Dam 8 here at, on at Genoa, us. Genoa, and Wisconsin. This is a wintering area for a number of species. Very right? much, well, primarily saugers and uh, walleyes and perch. Okay. Uh, as you go through the river, coming down off the rollers here, uh, there's 50, 60 foot hole, and now we're down in the flat between two wing dams, about 23 feet of water. And this thing will slide up, and there'll be a couple pockets in there and little humps eight, nine feet of water. We'll go for perch there a little bit later and saugers as the sun starts to go down a little bit. And that's the strangest thing with these great big bluffs here that are five, six, seven hundred feet high. Uh, we'll actually get sunset about 430 and it's supposed to set about 530. So the bite will come on an hour earlier tonight. And I think we'll get a, a good mix of uh, perch this afternoon, some small saugers and some walleyes. And as, as things start to 
go down here with the sun, we're gonna pound some really nice fish. There There's a go. good fish, we're hooked up. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh That's yeah, nice there's snogger. a snogger. There we go. A beautiful snogger. Hey, we're into him now, Ted. Look at that. <laughs> beautiful snogger, look at the markings. Look at the, got the brown spots up there on the dorsal fin. No white spot at the tail. Beautiful, boy they're fun, they fight hard. I'm gonna put this one back in because it's so cold out here. I don't want its eyes to freeze up on me. So I'm gonna do a release here. And I'd just like to show you real quick what I'm using here. I've got a blue and a silver chrome colored jigging Rapala. And I've actually got this packed with uh, spikes on each of the hooks instead of the uh, minnow head. I get a little better balance out of that. And I also have the knot of the line here to the back of the hook eye. And the reason I do that is that minnow head kind of pokes down on the bottom, and that way that back hook and that center treble are up a little when those fish hit. I think it helps me get a little better hook set. There we go. Oh, this is a nicer one, Ted. What you got, Tommy? This is a nicer one. A little heavier than those last ones. Need help? Well, you can if you want. He feels decent. Oh, that's decent. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice walleye. Nicer walleye there, huh? What Came out eye. a little deeper. Got out a little bit deeper, and there he was. There he was. I think that fish is probably legal, Tom. It's close, it's like about isn't 15. it? There. A decent walleye, huh? Nothing wrong with that. We'll be right back with some more great TGO memories right after this. On TGO, we go beyond the North American ice fishing belt. Join us here as we travel to China to fish crucian fish near the Mongolian border. System. Float, light hook, little piece of angle worm, and same thing, another real, real light bite. Another little Chinese cushion fish. About the same size, they're running uh, pretty decent, a little bigger than what we were catching yesterday. A lot of them yesterday were only probably three, three inches long. These are about the size of my hand, good six inches maybe. They come up so fast. <laughs> All right, another little cushion fish. Not quite as big as the last one, but still decent. They're running about the size of my, my hand. We'll dump these in there. Starting to accumulate a little bit of a catch now. Just using the system that uh, Mr. Lee has here, which is about a, oh, a 28 inch uh, light action rod. And again, they've got these uh, slip floats and those little sheet weights that they wrap on the line. Just an extremely small, super sharp light wire hook. There's no lead, there's no uh, sinker or weight or anything on the hook itself. A real lightweight, tiny, tiny wire hook. And the weight is positioned above it, and that is used to counterbalance the, uh, the float. And here's the, the result the Chinese cushion fish. About the size of our North American bluegill, a little bit thicker uh, body here in the tail. 
extremely uh, late biting um, fish, at least uh, in the last uh, two, three days we've been out here fishing. There it is, the Chinese cushion fish. Probably one of the lightest biting fish I've ever fished uh, through the ice. But you can see why the Chinese like to fish for them. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. We love bringing it to you. We want to stop and thank you, all of our viewers, for joining us here on TGO and making this show as popular as it has been. Four seasons, 50 different episodes already. Thank you very much. We appreciate you watching this episode. We hope that you'll be joining us for a lot more in the near future. And remember, no matter where we go or what we're fishing for, here on TGO, it's all ice fishing all the time. TGO has been brought to you by HT, premium ice tackle since 1974. Polar Fire Gear, this is how it's done. Tourism Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan, Canada's best freshwater fishing. Vexilar, ice fishing begins when you turn your Vexilar on. Kalispell, Montana, discovery in every direction. And these other fine sponsors. TGO, where it's all ice fishing all the time.